I S U P K. Universal practical knowledge. We come out of one west 125th Street, out of Harlem, New York, teaching blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians the truth according to this Bible. You know what I'm saying? Something that you're never going to hear in your Christian church. Your pastor won't speak about it, your politicians won't speak about it, nobody will speak about it except the Israelite School of Universal practical knowledge under commanding General Yohan. We're going to talk about the Bible right now. You know what I'm saying? Let me get, um, John 3.16, if I could. We start we starting right there, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna show you the, some of the things that are talked about every Sunday. Every Sunday in church, every single Sunday is always a reflection of John 3.16. John 3.16, over and over, right? That's every Sunday. We go over that generation after generation after generation of John 3.16. But here, let's let's read the verse and then we'll go more into it, alright? Got it? Read. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Stop right there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? Let's get some more. And he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, for, have everlasting life. That whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, right? right. So that sounds like it's talking about everybody, right? It sounds like the homosexuals and the lesbians and the drug dealers and all the races and all the, the, of the deviant people can come together so long as they believe, right? So long as they can come together, right? It sounds like we can all just get along, right? That's not what God is saying. Now we're going to break it down for you. We're going to make it extra clear so that way you can get some understanding. Start from the top. For God so loved the world. Stop right there. It's saying, for God so loved the world, all right? What the word world means. If you leave it up to modern um, understanding, everybody thinks it's talking about the whole planet. Everybody thinks it, it's talking about the whole earth. But that's not what it's saying. We're going to prove it to you right now. Hold that. Give me Psalms 90 and verse 2. Hold there. Hold there. Do not let that go. Let's get the people some understanding. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to notice a lot of blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians. You know what I'm saying? Christianity has lied to you. Christianity taught us fairy tales. Christianity, religion, has taught us all kinds of other ways that is not in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? It's taught, it's taught, Christianity, what is taught in the Christian church, in religion, is somebody else's thought and philosophies. Namely, the white man. You know what I'm saying? But let's find out. For God so loved the world, let's find out if what modern um, um, understanding, if the word world means earth, or if it means something else. Let's find out, read. So, so the 90 verse two. Psalms is talking King David right here. Ready? Let's go. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world. Before the mountains were brought forth. Read that after that. 
before the lands were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth. This is David. This is David praying to the Lord in the psalm. Before thou hast ever formed the, the, the mountains, right? Before the, the earth and the world is what he's saying. He may put a distinction between the word world and the word earth. You understand? You know, if you don't, let's explain. The word world does not mean the planet earth. That does not mean that. The word world means age or society, like the modern age, or a new society, or an old society, the new world, or the old world. That's all it's saying. It's not talking about the planet earth. You know what I'm saying? And specifically, when we go back to John 3.16, if we go back to John 3.16, let's go back, right? This is a conversation between two black men. One was Nicodemus. He was one of the religious leaders of those days. The other one, the other black man that was talking to Nicodemus in John, the third chapter, is, Jesus, is, who, is who the world knows as Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Mashiach in the Hebrew. God said, for God so loved the world, read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son, meaning the Lord gave his, his only unique son. This son was going to be about the father's business. This son was going to have a zeal to carry out the orders that the Lord sent him to do. This son was going to bring every black and Hispanic and Native American Indians back together into the fold because we are the Israelites of the Bible. This son cared about his people. This son was full of brotherhood. This son wanted his nation to be reestablished as the governing body on the face of the earth. You understand? This son that the Lord said was his only begotten son. Read. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. I'll stop right there. Now here's the Christian mindset. When they say, now um, whosoever believeth in him, right? It sounds like it's talking about everybody. But if you listen closely, or if you ever read the chapter, it's a conversation that was happening in the land of Israel between two black men. One is the king of Israel, Jesus Christ, as the world knows him. Two was Nicodemus, one of the religious leaders of that day. Let's get some more understanding. Let's find out who this whosoever is it talking about. Let me ask the second chapter. Let me ask the second chapter and the 31st verse. All right? We're going to get some real good, clear understanding of what it meant by whosoever. Like I said, we've been lied to all these years. Lied to about what's in the Bible. We've been lied to, we've been taught all kinds of other things, like believing in Santa Claus, like believing in Christmas and, and turkeys and Easter um, bunnies that laid um, eggs. You know what I'm saying? We believe whatever came out the white man's mouth, that we wanted to follow. We believe the white man when he said it's okay for you to be a homosexual right. and a lesbian and to eat crab, shrimp, pork, and lobster. Right. All those that I mentioned is a sin against God. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's a sin against God. Black people who are the Israelites, not Africans, black people, so-called Negroes, the real Jews of the Bible, West, West Indians, the tribe of Benjamin, Levi, the Haitians, you know what I'm saying, the Latinos, the Native American Indians, the Seminole Indians. We make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. We are not allowed, we are not allowed to be homosexuals and lesbians. That's the right. only reason why we live in that is because the good American dream. The American dream allows you to be a sexual deviant, a predator, you know what I'm saying, in America. That's not what God wants for you. Right. Let's get some understanding. Get back to Acts, second chapter, 31st verse. Remember, John 3, 16 said that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That sounds inclusive for everybody, but that's what it sounds like. Now let's clear up and make it sound crystal. Read. Acts chapter 2, verse 31. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, 
that his soul was not left in hell. We all get it. Hold on, it's twenty and third. Uh, so like the two and two, me, excuse me, five and thirty. That's what it means. We all get it right. You know what I'm saying? Acts five and thirty and thirty-one is what it means. Got it? All right. Acts chapter five, verse thirty. The God of whom our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew. See that again. The God of our fathers. Our fathers talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, blacks and little. And Latinos, Native American Indians, we the real descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. We raised up Jesus, who in the power of, of our forefathers raised up a, a black king by the name of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. In English, is Jesus Christ. Okay? Read. Whom? Ye slew and hanged. It ain't talking about the leadership, the religious leadership. Took Christ because they hated him so much. Because he was speaking against the very same thing that they believed in. Our religious leaders, like today, believed in the Roman doctrine. Today, they believe in the American dream. They believe in the American capitalism. They believe in the American democracy. They believe in the American philosophy. And Christ was against that. Christ is against that. The Most High is against that. That's Free. right. Him have God exalted. You understand? It says, Him have God exalted, meaning He put on a high stature. Read. Him have God exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Who? To Israel. You understand? To Israel, don't say anybody else. Where we at? And forgiveness of sins. Right? Uh, like, uh, like Jack, where it says, uh, you may have Israel. Next. Two, two. All right. We're going to get some more, right? Let's clear up the, the part now about uh, whosoever, okay? Acts 2 and 21. Uh, we're gonna get it, you understand? But we are definitely coming out here to teach black people and Latinos and Native American Indians that the stuff, the garbage that was taught in church, the garbage that is still being taught in church is full of lies, it's full of, not, it's full of garbage. It ain't true in according to the Bible. God ain't trying to save everybody. That's a damn lie. God ain't having everybody come together. We're gonna show you in the, right, right in the Bible, you got it? All right? So here we go. The whosoever of John 3, 16. Let's clear that up. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever not right there, you see, Acts 2 and 21. It says, and it shall come to pass, meaning it is going to happen, that whosoever. Right now, it sounds like everybody once again, but it ain't talking about that. Read. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Right, sound like it's everybody. Read. Shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Who? Ye men of Israel. Who is this? Ye men of Israel. That show you something about God. It show you that God ain't down for saving everybody. Right, right. It show you that God is separatist. Right. You know what I'm saying? It show you that God cares about his children That's and right. only his children. We've been lied to in church, man. We've been lied to for many, many years. That's We've been right. taught all kinds of garbage in church. Boy, it's incredible. And you see why all the homosexuals are flocking out of the church? Lesbians, they write in your choir. They singing them songs every Sunday. They singing them songs and stealing your woman every Sunday and filling their pockets with all the tithe monies. And then on, the, on top of that, so like, I am molesting your children. And on top of that, filling their pockets with all the tithe money. You know what I'm saying? Stealing from the people. And loving the white man. Loving them greatly. Believing and accepting anything and everything that the white man says that you should accept. Get ready. Because the white man soon probably going to lay down that you now could be a child molester. Because that's not far. That he allow homosexuality, right? But guess what? Right now you got child pedophiles in, in that organization called Man Boy Lover 
trying to fight for their rights too. Trying to fight for the right to molest little children. That ain't far. Why should we put, why should we not say, no, that can't happen? Hey, we once upon a time thought it was, it, it couldn't happen that homosexuals now be living free out, 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 out and about, out of the closet. You gotta come, come out of church. Right. We gotta get out of church quickly. That's you right. know what I'm saying? Before something drastic happens to one of your family members. It don't take a genius to find out the church is full of garbage. You know what I'm saying? It don't take a genius to find out. Ye men of Israel, let's go back to John 3, 16. That whosoever, right? We're gonna stop right there again, then we're gonna get some more. All right? We're gonna get some more right now for you. All right? Go ahead. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Stand, but have everlasting life. This is only talking about the Israelites. And guess what? If you don't believe it's only talking about the Israelites, give me Matthews 1 and 21. Let's make it clear. Let's make it clear, because if anybody should know who, it, as a matter of fact, let's get it, was it John 15, 24? I am not saying. You know what I'm saying? We're going to Matthews 1 and 21 first. Let's get it clear. Let's find out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Matthews 1 and 21. Let's get that one first, all right? Let's make it clear for the Christians. You know what I'm saying? And if, you were, if we wanted to really know what, whether or not God is right, as a matter of fact, don't believe what we're saying. Put it like this. Get a pen. Get a paper. We'll call out the scriptures, you go do the research. How about that? We don't want you to be the evils, But we want you to go into the book and find out if whether or not if the ISUPK is lying to you or not. You know what I'm saying? You got it? Read. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son that shall call, that shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hold up. Now the angel that stepped to um, Joseph, a black man by the name of Joseph, you know what I'm saying, talking about his son, a black child, from a black woman named Mary. And it said, and, he sh and, and she shall bring forth a son, he shall call his name Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sin. Notice it didn't say his people and. There was no word and after his people. It's only his people, a possessive pronoun. His people. It's only talking about the children of Israel. The children of Israel are the blacks and Hispanics and the Native American Indians, you know what I'm saying? Yes, the same people that you have in slavery, white man. You know what I'm saying? The same people that you ripping their families and putting them in detention centers, white man. The same people that you got up in the Indian reservations, white man. Those people, Christ is coming to save. Those, those people who are drowning in the Rio Grande with their children, Clinging on to them for dear life, and both of them died, Mr. White Man. You know what I'm saying? Both those children who are now living in those detention centers like animals, Mr. White Man, those very people, Christ is coming to save. You know what I'm saying? In the black neighborhoods and full of um, um, drugs and gunshots and violence, those people, Christ is coming to save. You know what I'm saying? On the reservations, where suicide is at a high rate, alcoholism is at a high rate, high rate, drug violence and all that is at a high rate and doesn't get spoken on on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC. You don't hear about what's going on on those Indian reservations. But guess what, Mr. White Man? Those people, Christ is coming to save. You That's understand? Right. It told you clearly that he shall save his people from their sins. So you got the one in Matthew? Was it 15 and 24? 10, Matthew 10, 5 and 6. All right? Matthew's 10, 5 and 6. We're going to make this clear. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you right here that it's always been about you, brothers and sisters. Always been about this family called the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Who are right now living the most horrific lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be inclusive with America when America keep kicking you in your chin. Keep... I'm um, beating you down to the to the very 
last thing that exists in you. And then they still want more. And white people walk around proud like they've accomplished something. White people, even though they beat down blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians, which they continue to do, still want to make America great, you know what I'm saying? No problem, Christ is coming to make Israel great again. You know what I'm saying? You better be ready for that day. That's the day you should concern yourself about. You got it? Read. Matthew chapter 10, verse five. These 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Hold up. You hear this? This is Jesus Christ now. I told you, if anybody knew who came to save who, it would have been Jesus Christ. He said, these 12, right? Read it again. These 12, Jesus sent forth. Jesus sent forth. Go ahead. And commanded them. He gave them an order. He commanded them. Go ahead. Saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. You understand? Go not into the way of the Gentile. And let me clear something up. In the church, black people, Hispanics and Native American Indians, we're taught that we are gen the Gentiles, right? And that them people that are living right now in Israel are the people of the book. Let's clarify this. According to the Bible, those people that are living right now in Israel that are fighting the Palestinians, both of those people are the Gentiles. And we're the real people of that land, you understand? We are right now in America living like Gentiles. We take on the customs of the Gentiles, the mannerisms of the Gentiles, the doctrines and philosophies of the Gentiles, the religions of the Gentiles. We eat the foods of the Gentiles, you understand? But we're not the real Gentiles, you know what I'm saying? We are the Israelites of the Bible, you know what I'm saying? So Christ told these 12 black men not to go into the way of the Gentiles. Read. And go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans into ye not. And to any city of the Samaritans, meaning what? That back in those days, in the, in the, in the, on the city of Samaria, you had children of Cush. The children of Cush, you know them today, as Ethiopians, Somalians, Kenyans, you know what I'm saying? And I forgot the other um, name that they call themselves by. The, the Yemenis, right? If I'm not mistaken? Yes. It, yeah, Ethiopian, Eritrea, Somalia, Mogadishu, Kenya, you know what I'm saying? Those make up the children of Kush. They were in our land, because the, the land of the city of Samaria is part of the land of Israel. You know what I'm saying? Christ told these 12 black men, not to go to these Kushites. You understand? Now keep going. Um, verse 6. But go rather to the lost. You go instead, but go rather. Go ahead. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But go rather to the lost sheep. You know why Christ called us lost sheep? Because we don't know who we are. We don't know our identity. We don't know our customs or our culture, our nationality. You ask any black man, any black man, so-called Negro, what is your nationality? You're gonna get six different answers. I'm Negro, I'm black, I'm black American, I'm African American, I'm African, I'm, you know, something else. You ask a Latino, what is their nationality? They're gonna give you the names of the lands that they come from. Well, I'm El Salvadorian, I'm Guatemalan, I'm this and that. Same thing with the Native American Indians. North American and Seminole Indians. You ask them, they're gonna say, I'm Cherokee, I'm Sioux, I'm Blackfoot, I'm this and that. When we don't really know that we are the children of Israel, coming out of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, listed on this sign here. We don't know that, read. But Christ said to these 12 black men, but go rather to the lost, what? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You understand? Now, let me get uh, the apocrypha if, if I could, you know what I'm saying? Now let's, we, we clear that up that Christ knew who he came for, you know what I'm saying? Christ knew where he got his orders from and who he came to save. 
Let's get Second Ezra, the sixth chapter. Let's make it clear, because I know some Christians are lingering saying, no, but that can't be true. Not my God, not my God. God loves everybody. Christ ain't coming just to save the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Christ ain't coming just to do that. I'm sorry to tell you, but yes, he is. And guess what? Let me let you know something else. Christ, and, and especially God, don't love these other races. And we're going to prove it to you in, in, the, in the Bible. This book is called the Apocrypha. If you go do your research, this book in the 1611 translation from the Torah and Greek into the English was included, was translated into English by King James, which a lot of people don't know. King James was not a white man. King James was a black man, and we have the we have the evidence to prove this. You know what I'm saying? King James was not a white man. King James was known as King James the um, from Scotland, right? The Scot King James the first of Scotland. Excuse me, King James the sixth of Scotland, who became King James the first of England was a black man, you know what I'm saying? But we don't know this. You know why we don't know this? Because this information was kept away to you by the white man. He didn't want it to show you how great black people are. That's right. He, he wanted you to remain an eternal slave. You know what I'm saying? But we're gonna show you right here in the Bible where Christ, where the Lord said who we love and who we hate. Sec, um, second Ezra chapter six and 54, read. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 54 And after these Adam also whom thou madest Lord over all thy creatures Ezra saying and after these Adam also talking to the Lord whom thou madest Lord over all thy creatures read of him come we all meaning this that the people that are existing right now on the face of the earth are the descendants of the eight survivors that survived the flood during the days of Noah. Read. Why? Because Noah was the direct lineage from Adam. Read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Hold up. And you notice I, 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 it says, of him come we all, right? And the people also whom thou hast chosen. See, what we don't understand, black people, Hispanics, and Native American in this is yes, God chose a people for himself. God did not choose everybody on the face of the earth. That is Christian lies. That is a lie from the white man that is taught in the church. God don't choose everybody. God chose a people for himself. Read. He's going to get it. Also, Salaki, of him come we all, and the people also whom God has chosen. Drop down to verse 56. Read. As for the other people, talking about the other people, right? We already seen in verse 54, he said that we all come from Adam, and the people also whom thou has chosen. That word and made a total and clear difference or distinction between everybody and a people that God chose. Read the top of verse 56 again. As for the other people, which also, which also come of Adam, meaning the other people, not the chosen one, but the white people, and the Arabs, and the Africans, and the Chinese, and the East Indians, and the Koreans, and the Polynesians, and all the other races, the, the Ethiopians, the Nigerians, you know what I'm saying, the Somalians, the Kenyans, the South uh, uh, Africans, all of them. You understand? And as for the other people, go ahead. Which also, which also come from Adam. Which also come from Adam, go ahead. Thou hast said. He's saying that God has said, thou hast said. That thou. So like thou, thou hast said that they are nothing. They are what? That they 
are nothing. What did God say about white people? That they are nothing. What did God say about Nigerians? That they are nothing. What did God say about East Indians? That they are nothing. What did God say about Koreans? That they are nothing. And Chinese? That they are nothing. And uh, um, Mongolians? That they are nothing. And Hawaiians? That they are nothing. And Eskimos? That they are nothing. That they are nothing. What about Arabs? That they are nothing. Hear this. All the other races are nothing to God. The only thing that he could compare them to is this. Read. But be like unto spittle. Be like unto what? But be like unto spittle. Understand? God look at every race like spit. Something right. disgusting that you right poof, yeah. and, the, and the slimy green one is right, slap on right, the floor. Right. Could you imagine? God said the white man is spit. The Africans are spit. The you know the the, the, the Ethiopians are spit. Nigerians are spit. South Africans are spit. God said that the East Indians are spit, and that the Chinese, the Japanese, the Koreans, all the Orientals are spit. The East Indians, you know what I'm saying? The Persians are spit. You know what I'm saying? All these races are spit. Now, if you got a problem with that, take it up with God. Because guess what? You're going to get an answer back real quick, fast in a hurry. And you're not going to like it. You're not gonna like when, when God sent another tsunami on your land and wipe off more than 22,000 people off that land. You're not gonna like it when God caused a volcano to erupt and, and, and just start spreading all over your land. You're not gonna like it when God caused a, a landslide, a mudslide to disrupt your home, your community, and now you and your pops and all your family members are 20 feet deep under the ground because of a mudslide. You know what I'm saying? If you don't believe, if you don't believe what we read right now in the Bible, you know what I'm saying? But guess what? This is God's world. This is God's world, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people might not agree with it, but this is how God wrote. God loved his people and only his people. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this right here. Let's get on uh, John, excuse me, uh, Isaiah 45 and 17. Let's make it clear if you don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah 45 and 17. But like we got, we got, we're here to spell it out for you. Let me tell you something. We're here to spell it out because it's important. Black people and Hispanic and Native American Indians, we need to change the ways that we live in. We need to stop being good old Americans and stop being the Israelites that we meant to be. Because that's who we will always will be. Breathe. I'm saying, read. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. With, hold up. It's saying, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord. That makes it clear. Let me, let you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's stop the confusion now. By now, you should know when the ISUPK come out here. By now, you should know, right? That those, I'm talking about those that have been coming out often, you know what I'm saying? That God will only love but one people, and that one people he's going to save, and that's just Israel, right? But Israel shall be what? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed. No. Meaning in that day, when our salvation come, we're not going to be ashamed of who we are. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be ashamed to be called, I'm from this tribe, I'm from the tribe of Judah, or the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe of Benjamin or any of these tribes listed right here. We're not gonna be ashamed of that anymore. Right now we live in America, and just to say that we're black, you know what I'm saying, it has some type of way, because we know how these people, talking about the white people, act towards us, you know what I'm saying? And not just them, all the other races. Every other race besides the white man that come to America always gotta be looking down and smirking at God's people. You go into the 7-Eleven, you see it clearly. These Egypts, these Ethiopians, that run them stores or the East Indies, they're always talking to us like we nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like we less than nothing. When in reality, the Egyptians are spit. The Ethiopians are spit. All these other races are spit. And that day when we're on top, 
We're not gonna be ashamed of who we are. Read. Be a slut. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. That day we're not even gonna be confused about uh, of, of who we are and who, and, our, and, and who we're meant to be, our culture. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna be in that day living how we know how to live. You know what I'm saying? In the law, in the laws, law statutes, and commandments, of course. But we gotta act like who we are. You know what I'm saying? Not like Americans. We. Nor, nor confounded world without end. We are world without end, meaning what? That our society, our society, after this society, after the American society, the only society, society that is going to continuously exist generation after generation after generation after generation for all eternity is the Israelite society, the world without end. You know what I'm saying? That's the only generation. And guess what? You know how black people and Hispanic and Native American Indians, we live in an American lifestyle, right? We, we celebrate Christmas and New Year's and all this. We get into all the um, um, racist religions and all that. And that day, everybody on the planet is going to live how we tell them to live or their heads are going to get chopped off in that day.